So, we're going to go over chapters 14 through 17. I'm going to go over the key ideas as long as it takes. We're going to do it. I don't think it'll take too long, but um, as long as it takes. Let's see, is this working right? Let's see if I put that right there, that right there. Let's see, does this show up? Okay. It just seems a little tilted. Um, I should be prepared. People are throwing away my stuff. Okay. So, let's just get started. Chapter 14. What's the key idea? There's really just maybe two key ideas. The first is, how do you calculate the electric field? Let's say I have um, over here some point charge plus Q. And I want to find the electric field right there. Okay, so let's call this R plus. It's a vector. Let's call this R O for the observation location. Now, how would I find the electric field? Well, I need to know this right here, R, where R equals final minus initial. So this is just going to be R O minus R plus. And so Typically, we will have values for the observation location and the charge, and so you can find this vector r. And then I can find an electric field with this equation, E, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over r squared r hat. And that's it. That's really it. Okay, so this is a constant. Uh, this is that 9 times 10 to the 9th constant. This is the charge right there. That's the magnitude of that vector. And that's a unit vector for that. So if Q is positive, then the electric field is going to be pointing that way. If Q is negative, it's going to be pointing that way. That's really it. Uh, what the, the other thing in there is a special case of a dipole. Um, so in a dipole, I have um, a negative charge and a positive charge uh, separated by distance S. So if I want to find the electric field there are two cases that we can find the electric field for an expression for um, without too much difficulty. And this is called the perpendicular case. So in this case, that is my distance r. And the electric field actually would be going that way. Because it's the sum of this electric field and this electric field. And they sum to that. They have the same distance, and so they sum to that way. Uh, and then there's an electric field I can find along the axis, and that's R parallel. Uh, both those are you can do uh, without too much difficulty. <clears throat> okay, the expressions for those you should be able to derive. I'm not going to do it. I've already done it. Um, it's in the book, and you should be able to use also. Uh, whenever you have the electric field due to more than one point charge, you just take the vector sum of the individual point charges, and that's it. Okay, any questions about chapter 14? Ah, see, it's a video. You can't really ask questions. Okay. You can. I just can't hear you. Chapter 15 uh, really talks about the nature <coughs> of matter and charge. Uh, the first thing is... Let's see. What was the first thing? One of the key ideas is what's the electric field... What's the difference between a conductor and an insulator? So let's say this is an insulator and that's a conductor. Uh, in an insulator, essentially we have charges bound to, uh, if you think of, a, of matter as a whole bunch of little balls connected by springs or something like that, in the insulator, the individual electrons are essentially attached to a particular atom. In a conductor, they can move around, so the outer electrons are shared. So we have what we call like an electron C, and that can move around. So since they can move around, if I have an electric field inside of here, they will, they'll accelerate. They'll actually accelerate, interact, slow down, stop, accelerate, and so forth, and have a drift velocity. It's introduced in this chapter, but that's not super important. What is important is that if this is a conductor, then the net electric field inside of here has to be zero. So if I put a positive charge right here, then I'm going to get some excess negative charges over there, some excess, did it just stop? 
Yeah, okay, I thought I heard it. Uh, so that these surface charges create an electric field going this way, that creates an electric field going that way, the net electric field is zero. Now, that's not true inside of an insulator. In an insulator, we do get polarization of the molecules. They become, if I put a plus charge right here, this is like a little minus and a plus, and um, the, we say that, I want to make sure I use the same notation. I don't want to forget this. So we say the polarization P equals QS. That, that QS comes in your dipole equation. is equal to some constant times the applied electric field. Okay, so the closer you get this, the greater that dipole attraction. And then you can find the attraction between a point charge and, a di and an induced dipole. I think that's really the main ideas in chapter in chapter 15, yeah, okay. <clears throat> okay, chapter 16 um, really started off with something like, and I'll do another, I did, I already did this example of what if I don't have a point charge, what if I don't have a dipole? What if I have a distribution of charges? So this is a, a charged line with charges all evenly distributed over it. How do I find the electric field at some location? Well, in this case, what you do is you break this into little pieces, I'll call it DQ, and that will create an electric field, I'll call it DE, where this is um, some value R, and I can, I can find that. I get an expression for that. And so, um, really, it'd just be DE equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught DQ over R squared R hat. Um, if that's a small piece, then this is like a point charge. Now, the key here is to integrate both sides. In this case, I can't do that because R changes, and I have an integration variable that's a D, DQ. So we need to get the integration variable and the same as the changing variable here. Uh, in this case, we would call this maybe the thing that changes y. I could get r in terms of y. I could get dq. If I say it's a linear charge distribution, and this has a length l, then q over l equals dq over dy. That little piece is going to have uh, part of the charge. So then dq would be dy q over l. Um, <clears throat> you plug that in there, you get r in terms of y, and then you get everything in terms of y and you can integrate. And this integral turns out to be not the easiest, um, but not impossible. Okay. We only did it for um, along the center of the rod because other places the it's just really too difficult to set up, just like the dipole. Um, after we did a ring of charge, we did a plate of charge, uh, we did a capacitor, we did a sphere of charge. Um, all those things you should understand how to drive them. You know, maybe I'll ask, what if this was a non-uniform charge distribution? How would you do that? That's a good question. Okay, but that's all Chapter 16 is about: is finding the electric field due to charge distributions, not point charges. Okay, chapter, so chapter 14, 15, and 16 all deal with the same thing. They're saying, look, here's a charge, what's the electric field? That's it, okay? Maybe it's a charge distribution. Um, chapter 17 introduces the idea of electric potential. I'm not going to re-derive this. Instead, let me just say what it is. Um, change in electric potential is the change in potential energy per unit charge. Uh, so it's going to be negative the integral from point 0.1 to 2 E dot dr is the best way to write it. Yeah, that's fine. So if I integrate the electric field from some point to some other point, the path integral, I'll get the change in electric potential in volts. Um, so a couple of important things with this, uh, since 
the electric field is a lot like the gravitational field and that it's what we call a conservative field. And that means it doesn't matter what path you take from point one to point two, the change in electric potential will be the same value. Um, that's, that's the true definition. Don't, there's the biggest problem is a lot of people say, oh, delta V equals E delta S. That's true only if, only if the electric field's constant. Okay, so don't, don't think that's a true thing. It's a special case. Um, we can go backwards. If we know the electric potential at some point, we can find the x component of the electric field is going to be negative uh, partial of v with respect to x. The y component is negative partial of v with respect to y. And the z component, negative partial of v with respect to z. Wait, it says not negative. It should be negative. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I think I derived this also, and that is the uh, electric potential due to a point charge. So here's some charge. <clears throat> I know the value for the electric field. Okay. And so if I integrate from infinity to some location r, then I get the electric potential as a function of r, and that's 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r. I, I don't know why. I have the hardest time remembering if that's minus or not. Point charge. It's not. Okay, good. I did put minus. I was going to. I was thinking about it. But I didn't. Um, so this is weird because here we dealt with a change in potential. And this is just the potential. Okay. What we did here was to say that V at infinity is equal to zero volts. We set the potential at infinity equal to zero. And then we can just say relative to infinity is really what we're talking about there. Um, but <clears throat> this makes it nice because if I want to say go from... Uh, say R1 to R2, if I want to do the change in potential there, that would be delta V equals V2 um, minus V1. So it would be the electric potential with respect to infinity at 2 minus 1 with respect to infinity. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other key ideas. Um, Ah, a conductor, if I have a, 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 an electric conductor, if it's in equilibrium, the electric field is zero. And that means that the, if the field is zero inside, the potential is not zero, the change in potential is zero. So we have the potential inside of a conductor is constant. Not necessarily zero, even though it could be. Okay, so that's chapter 17. I'll go back and pick a couple problems from 17 and maybe a couple other ones and post those.